Thank you for joining the workshop. Um, my name's Lindsay. I'm one of the AT LMS administrators. So I'm an admin for both iLearn and Canvas on this campus. Um, and our Department of Academic Technology oversees the support of both those systems and any of the technologies that go into them and also classroom support and a wide range of technology that faculty and students use on this campus. But today we're going to be focusing on Canvas because that's the newest system that has come to our university. Um, this workshop is intended to uh, give you all a better look inside Canvas if you haven't already seen it, uh, how to get around, how to um, perform certain things. Uh, we're not gonna deep dive into into any how to's such as like how to create a quiz and sorts of uh, that type of thing, um, just mainly to get uh, help you get around the system itself and see what's available inside of Canvas. So this is a quick overview of what we'll be covering today. Uh, we're going to go over accessing Canvas for both you and students, uh, the user interface, how courses are laid out, how to manage your students in Canvas, assessments and activities that are inside Canvas and the gradebook, any external tools that have come with Canvas and extras and support. So um, I'm leaving the chat open. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat. I will try to get to them at the, the point that they're asked, but later at the end of this uh, workshop, there will be a period where you can ask questions. And if you need me to demo anything, I can demo that. So um, there is just a bulk of content to get through. So, but I will be uh, answering and seeing any of those questions in the chat. So I'm going to get right into it. And the first section is getting access to Canvas. So the only way as of right now, if your courses aren't already in Canvas, uh, to get access would be to request a sandbox. And a sandbox is a blank, empty Canvas course. Um, a, Canvas, a sandbox allows you to play around with Canvas, build activities like quizzes and assignments without the worry of having any students attached to it. So just think of it kind of like a playground to build what you want and um, uh, feel free to make up any type of um, activity or trying to test things out through that sandbox. So if you haven't already, I if you're courses aren't in Canvas, or if you haven't requested a sandbox, I highly recommend requesting a sandbox because then that allows you time to get used to the system. And especially if you're working with materials from iLearn that have been imported into Canvas, there's going to be a bulk of work that you need to do in order for your Canvas site to look similar to what your iLearn site did. So. The second option that list is listed here is the opt-in. The opt-in period for fall 2022 is closed. And that what that meant was that you are teaching your courses inside of Canvas, not in iLearn. So, um, but once spring comes around, you will have courses in Canvas and it will be opt out. So if you're not ready for a Canvas in the spring, just make sure that there's going to be a period of time where you have to opt out of your classes. So in fall, it was all opt in, but spring, it everything's gonna already be in Canvas. So make sure you opt out. And we'll be sending faculty reminders and emails about that as well. So, um, but to request a sandbox, you can go to canvas.sfsu.edu page. And on that main page, there should be a button there that says, get a Canvas sandbox, and that will send us a ticket and we will create one and it will show up in your Canvas account. So the next area is logging into Canvas. And logging into Canvas is a little bit different than it was in iLearn. So in iLearn, you went to iLearn.sfsu.edu and you had your login button, which you can then put your username and your password. For Canvas, the primary way for faculty to log in is through canvas.sfsu.edu and then clicking on one of these two login to Canvas buttons. Once you click one of those buttons, that will redirect you to the SF State Global Login page, and then it will launch you into the Canvas system. So that's the primary way for faculty to enter Canvas. For students, 
the primary way and the suggested way is through iLearn. So if students have any courses that are operating inside of Canvas, they will be listed in iLearn in the My Courses block. So the way they'll be able to distinguish that it's a Canvas course is if the, by the course name, they see Canvas in brackets. So once students click on that link, then they launch themselves into the Canvas system. So students access Canvas through iLearn, faculty through the canvas.sfsu.edu page. But keep in mind now from this semester to fall 2023, students will have courses that live both inside iLearn and Canvas. Um, but iLearn is the primary way to get to either of those courses. So this next section is the actual user interface of Canvas. So the first thing you'll see after logging into Canvas is going to be your Canvas dashboard. And this, the Canvas dashboard looks pretty much just like what you're seeing in this image here. Um, by default, your dashboard is set to this card view. So each of these squares is a card and each card represents one of your classes or your sandboxes. So um, by default, all your courses are going to be listed under the unpublished courses section. And what that means is an unpublished course is not accessible to your students. So in iLearn, you had to make your courses available to your students. In Canvas, you have to publish your courses to make them available to students. Um, there's a few ways to do that. You, the easiest way is on the card, you can just click this white publish button and then it will move the card into the published courses section. So just be aware that if you do not publish your course um, in Canvas, the hyperlink in iLearn won't appear at all for your students. So it's my recommendation to publish your course a day early or um, sometime before the actual day of your course because students might um, have, might, freak out a bit that they don't see the link appearing on their iLearn My Courses block. So next is the dashboard customization. So with the dashboard comes a few customization options. If you don't like the card view, you can change it to a list or recent activity. Um, and then each card also has customization features. You can give your cards a unique color. You can set a unique image. You can move around the cards. Um, and then you can also give your card a nickname. So if you wanted to label that course your most important course, you could. Uh, and nicknames are only seen by you. So your students won't see the nicknames because students are also able to set their own nicknames for courses. Um, if you set an image for your card, students will see that image. So just a few areas you can play around with in the dashboard. The next area is user profile. Uh, the way to access your user profile is by clicking on this account button or uh, this account area in the global navigation menu. And then you'll get a pop-up menu and there will be a button that says profile. And then you'll get to a screen like this and you can click edit profile to then add a profile picture, any bio information if you want, any links, anything you really want to include, you can include it here. And this carries over to all of your courses. This next section is how a course is laid out. So what you're looking at in this picture is a blank Canvas course. Um, so by default, your Canvas course is going to be set to the modules view. In this picture, there are no modules showing, um, and that's because in Canvas, there's no prescription on how to structure your course. So if you want to use the modules, you'll have to create each one, and we'll get into modules in a second. Um, but this is kind of how the course is broken up. So on the very left, you have your global navigation menu, the key items here will be your account, your dashboard, and your inbox. An inbox area is for messaging students and messaging other faculty, uh, a key area to send out messages. Um, 
And then this, everything to the right of the global navigation menu is your course. So every course will have this course navigation menu on the left. Each of these links will take you to a different area of your course. Um, so if you click on grades, you'll go to the grade book. If you go to quizzes, you'll go to a list of your quizzes. And students also see this list. Um, you are able to customize this list if you want to. And then anything that shows this gray eye with a slash through it means your students can't see it. You're able to go into that area, but students cannot access it. They don't even see the link up here if it has that icon next to it. So this middle area is where your course content will actually live. So this is where you would be adding assignments, quizzes. Um, if you have any external links, you can add them here, but you would have to add a module first, and then you can add items into that module. So think of modules like I learned sections. Um, and then on the right side here is the context aware menu. Uh, big things here are the publish button. So you can also publish your course from within inside the course by clicking on this gray publish button. And you, you will know it's published because that will turn green. Um, the other key ticket items here is the import existing content area. So if you're copying a, a, a Canvas course into another Canvas course, you'll start that process here. Um, if you're copying content over from iLearn into Canvas, this is also where you start that process inside Canvas. So just wanted to point that out that that lives um, on this right side and you only see the context aware menu when you're at your home page. So that's the breakdown of what a course looks like or at least an empty course. So we're gonna just get into it a little bit further. So um, this next area is a breakdown of modules. So your modules are essentially iLearn sections. Uh, they're essentially bins that you can dump content into. So uh, a module by default will look something like um, just a rectangle with a title, and then you can click on one of these plus icons to add content into that module. So by default, if you're starting from a blank empty canvas course, then uh, you will have to create each and every module um, if you want, but if you're importing from iLearn or a different Canvas course, um, Canvas will automatically create those modules based on how many sections you have in iLearn or how many modules you have in the other Canvas course. So modules um, also have a lock and till feature, so you can um, set the module to be hidden until a certain date. Um, also, modules can be published individually, so if you wanted to, per, uh, to hide a module, you could unpublish it by clicking on the green little check mark in the right, and that will unpublish the entire module, and essentially what that does is just hide it from your students. They won't be able to see, see the module or anything within it, so it's this small. If you see anything with a green check mark next to it, that means it's visible to your students, it's published. If you see anything with a circle with a slash through it, a gray circle with a slash through it, then that means it's hidden from your students and your students cannot access whatever that item or module is. Um, so modules are a, a lot different um, than what I learned sections were. For starters, there's no label feature or there's no section summaries. So you can't have any big um, paragraph style text. So if you wanted to give like a week overview, you can't have that text displaying directly on the module. You also can't have pictures displaying directly on modules or any type of colored custom text. Um, so modules are limited in that sense and they should, we've been recommending faculty that modules should be used as more action items for your students. So if you need them to read something, or if you need to, them to complete a uh, assignment, then you add that assignment to the module, you add the PDFs to the module, um, uh, mainly just ticket action ticket items so that your modules don't seem so cluttered and overwhelming to the students. Because by default, your modules list, your modules are just gonna be a giant list of words to students, so. 
And this is kind of a breakdown of an iLearn page that was directly in, imported into a Canvas site or a Canvas course. So right away, you can see there's uh, a lot of key differences. First, the pictures, it's not uh, not displaying anymore. Any type of colored text is gone. The text itself will remain, but any, any customization that was added to it just disappears. Um, also, any descriptions that you set to display on your iLearn main course page, so like you see this assignment has a little description under it, those won't show up uh, directly on the module. You can find descriptions of your activities by clicking on the activity itself from the module, and then this description will live on that following page. Um, but just uh, be aware that if you are importing from iLearn, which I know many of you are, um, there's going to be a lot of work that needs to be done to make it feel and look the way you want in Canvas. So, and we'll go over a few things that are different after importing later on. This next area is one of our biggest recommendations to faculty. So since your default home page is set to that modules view, it's just a giant list of words. That's not the most user friendly or not the most inviting page to have set as the first thing your students see right away when accessing your course. So what we recommend to faculty is to set a custom front page. Um, you can create an, a page, a unique page, and then um, a page will give you a lot more customization options. You can put pictures, you can put external links, you can put course links, you can put your syllabus on there. Uh, and it kind of provides them a landing page that will then route your students to other areas of the course. Um, because we have the impression that, uh, especially for newer students, they're not necessarily going to know to click on the left side menu or to go to the modules area to find their assignments or go to the assignments area. So having a front page can help them navigate your course and allows you to a chance to kind of better introduce yourself and the course itself. So, um, and there is a guide on our AT help site that shows you how to set a custom homepage, um, but this is kind of an example of it. So um, I just put, a picture real quick. And then this right here is a table, which is the name, Zoom link. Uh, we recommend that a front page just has every, all the vital information about the course. So where it's meeting, if there's any office hour information. And then below, these are just links uh, that take uh, the students to different areas of the course. So weekly modules, they click on that and it will take them into the modules area of the course. So the next area is how to actually add content to your course. So if you're starting from scratch, which means you're not taking stuff from iLearn and putting it in or copying from another Canvas course, the main way to add content to your course is by creating modules and then clicking on the small plus icon button in the top right of that module. Once you click on that plus button, it will give you this pop-up menu that allows you to add assignments, quizzes, discussions, uh, pages, uh, pretty much any type of activity that's inside Canvas, you can add to a module. Um, and so think of it like when you had your island sections and you had to add an activity or resource to that section, it's pretty much the same principle for adding things to the module. The other way to add content to um, your Canvas course is by clicking on one of the links from the left navigation menu. So if you click on assignments, you'll get to a page that looks like this. And then on the right corner, there will be a button that says plus assignment. And the same will apply to quizzes. So if you click on quizzes from the left, you'll get to an area that looks like this, but it will have a plus quizzes button and so on with the rest of the um, activities that you can create in Canvas. So these are the two primary ways if you're starting from scratch. So this is a kind of a breakdown between modules and pages. So like I said, uh, modules, you can add all the activities to. 
you can add text headers, which are pretty much just giant bolded text. And then you can add indent levels, which moves items within your module to the right a bit. So you can kind of create some type of visual hierarchy in your module. Uh, but those are the three things you can really add to modules uh, versus when you look at a page, a page, you can have pictures, tables, you can add PDFs, you can add icons if you like icons uh, and any type of custom text, really. So if you uh, pages offers you a lot more customization and uh, a area to design something more like visually consumable for your students. So this next area is student management. Uh, so the main area to view a list of your students is going to be going to the people link that's located on the left course navigation menu. Once you click on the people link, you'll have a giant list of your students. Uh, this course is pretty sad since there's only one teacher in it, uh, but you will see all your students listed here and um, any students. So if you had a fall 2020 course, 2022 course, or if you have a spring 2022 course, uh, students will manually be added to those Canvas sites based on the class roster. Um, so you shouldn't have to worry about manually enrolling anybody or any students. Um, and then if you're worried about students adding late or dropping the course, Canvas uh, automatically upstate, upstates the roster every two hours. So if they've dropped the course, Canvas will remove them from your course. If they added it, they'll add it. It's just, just be aware there is like a two hour um, time period that it cycles through. And then also you can um, add manually enroll users through this page. So if you click on the plus people button in the top right corner, you can click that and add any user associated with SFSU by using their SF state email address. So you would click plus people, input the SFSU email address, and then add that person. You would choose their role, whether there's five roles to choose for, from in Canvas, and there's a breakdown of what those roles mean in the AT Help Guide. So, so um, through the people link, you can send messages to individual students by clicking on their name. And then once you click on their name, this right side pop-up will come up and there will be a small mail icon in the top right. And if you click on that mail icon, that will pop up this window that's essentially an email composition. And once you submit that, it will go off to that individual student. Um, from the people's link, you can't send a message to your entire class, but the easiest way to send a message to every student in the class, it will be through the announcements link. So if you click on announcements from the left navigation menu and click the plus announcement button, uh, that will get you to a page that looks kind of like an email composition. You would put the title, which is the subject, and then um, you have a text box for the body of your message. And then once you submit that announcement, that will automatically send uh, that message to all of your students' email address, SF State email. And also the good thing about announcements is that if you send it out through announcements, that announcement or that message will always live in your announcements area. So students can also click on the announcements link and see any messages or any communications you have sent out through there. So le less excuses for them if they say they didn't get the email because it's on the announcements link. And then also, if your students are using your uh, the Canvas student app, uh, and if they have notifications enabled, they will get a little ping notification every time you send a message out to your class. So that's the main way to send a message out to your students in the course will be through announcements link and individual students, you use the people link and click on their person on, on their name. The next area here will be attendance. Uh, attendance works also a little bit differently than it did in iLearn. Uh, the attendance activity can be uh, accessed by clicking on the left attendance link. Uh, and then you'll get to a page that looks like this, the roll call page. Um, automatically, Canvas will 
list all of your students on this page. And you can mark attendance by clicking on the little circle radio button in between the student's picture and the student's name. And that's how you mark their attendance. So you keep clicking on it to get to the proper one. There are three options, present, late, and absent. And uh, you can just click through all of that. Uh, the easiest way to mark attendance would be to click this mark all present button and then click on the radio buttons for the ones that are late or uh, um, absent. Uh, attendance is not only visible to instructors, students can also see attendance, uh, but you can disable that so that you can only see it um, if that's how you'd like it to operate. But students cannot mark their own attendance, only instructors have the ability to. And then uh, unlike in iLearn, iLearn you had to create sessions for every class you held. In Canvas, you don't have to create sessions anymore. Um, once you click the attendance link, Canvas will automatically default to today's date. Um, so um, you would then see a whole list of your students there. And then you can also click on this calendar icon to navigate to different dates to mark attendance. So moving on to the next area, which are assessments and gradings. So the first type of graded activity you can create are assignments. And assignments are probably the most similar activity in Canvas compare, when comparing to iLearn. Uh, assignments can be file submission. They can be online text entry. They can have no submission and grade only. Um, and they can, you can add a document for your students to annotate through regular assignments as well. Assignments can be peer reviewed or they can be assigned to groups. Um, you can also assign different due dates to one assignment, especially if you're combining courses. Uh, you can have two different due dates for the same um, assignments instead of having to create two different assignments for each of those sections. So um, the settings page looks pretty similar to how it did in iLearn. So just uh, Make sure you have your points and then uh, choose the submission type and students will be able to submit to your assignments and they're always any assignment you create will be or any graded assignment you create will be located in through the assignments link on the left. So the next thing is quizzes quizzes also are pretty similar to how they were in iLearn. So every question type that was available in iLearn should have an equivalent in Canvas. Uh, the main difference is they look a little bit different, but that's because Canvas looks a lot different than iLearn does. So uh, one thing that's going to be important to note is that for both assignments and quizzes, Canvas will retain the original due date. So if you're importing uh, assignments or quizzes from iLearn, if you had a quiz set to be due back in December 2020, then in Canvas, that quiz will still be due in December 2020. So be sure to go through your assignments and quizzes to change the due dates to align to the current semester. So, and by default, quizzes are set to be unpublished when you import them. Uh, and that's because you need to go through your quizzes to change those due dates. And also I highly recommend previewing the quizzes to make sure that your questions are formatted correctly, because sometimes Canvas has a hard time uh, breaking up multiple choice options. So just beware. The next area here is the speed grader tool. This is a, a grading tool that is associated with any type of grady, graded activity in Canvas. So whether that be an assignment, a discussion, a quiz, all of those use the speed grader. Um, so to access the speed grader, you would go to that assignment or quiz, click on the three dots or on the right, it will be listed speed grader and it will take you into this view that looks like this. Um, and you are able to add annotations directly on the document by using this top uh, toolbar. 
And then you can also input a grade on the right. You can put any general feedback if you want. This includes audio comments, video comments. You can attach external files here. And then um, the easiest thing, so this is the easiest way to grade because then you can just click on this arrow in the top right to then move to your next student and grade their paper or their submission. So the next area is the grade book. And the grade book is pretty different than it was in iLearn. So the grade book looks something like what you see behind this pop-up window. You'll see a giant list of your students and every column in the grade book represents a um, graded activity. So you can input grades directly from the gradebook by clicking on the tile and inputting a grade. Um, also, the gradebook has some color features. So anything in red means they're missing a submission. Blue means late submission. And then if it's normal, if it's gray, that means they, they did it right. So uh, grade, the gradebook can be accessed by clicking on the grades link from the left navigation menu. You can still set up late policies and grading posting pol policies. Um, one of the major differences with the Canvas gradebook is that weighted grades. So if you're having a weighted system where you have certain categories that are certain percentages of the grade, that's done outside of the gradebook. You have to set up those categories or Canvas calls them assignment groups in the assignments area of Canvas. So you have to click on the assignments link from the left and then click the button that says assignment groups. And then you have to create an assignment group for each and every category you have for your gradebook. Once you've created those groups, then you can assign weights to those groups. So in iLearn, you did that all within the gradebook, uh, but in Canvas, that's done in the assignments area. And once that's set up, that will reflect, the grades will reflect in the gradebook. So just a key point to keep in mind if you are on a weighted uh, grading system. And then another key thing to point out is Canvas by default has this philosophy that students will be able to see everything all the time. So um, automatically all your grade books are going to be set to automatically post grades when they're available. So if you don't want that, or you want to be able to set a certain date when grades are released to your students for certain assignments or the entire gradebook, then you have to go into your gradebook settings and then change this grade posting policy to manually post grades. So just be aware that your Canvas courses for fall or for spring will be set up to automatically post the grades. And then uh, students don't, <laughs> students only see their own grade book. They don't see every, anyone else's grades, uh, just their own. So once they click into the grades link, they don't see a list of students. They just see their, their name and their grades for each assignment. So, um, and then also the grade book has a limited ability to hide grades. So be aware if you release the grades for a particular assignment, Canvas will not allow you to hide the grades after you've shown them to students. So and we are getting to uh, the last area, which is external tools. And these are tools that are integrated into Canvas. So one of the primary tools that's already integrated is Turnitin, which I know many of you use, uh, but the way to add Turnitin assignments is a little different than it was in iLearn. So the way to add a Turnitin assignment is by adding it through the module. You have to go to the module, click on the little plus icon next to the module, and then there's gonna be a top drop down menu. That drop down menu, you have to choose external tool. And then once you choose external tool, you'll have the option to select turn it in. And then, one, then you can add the item. Um, so then it will add that turn it in assignment to your module, but that's not it. So right now it's going to select turn it in. Um, it's going to change a quick setting and then add it to the module. So then you have to click on the Turnitin assignment itself, and then that will allow you to configure the Turnitin assignment to specific dates and however you wanna set it up, if you want peer review and such. 
So just be aware to add an uh, Turnitin assignment, you have to use the external tool. Um, and then Turnitin does not integrate with the speed grader because Turnitin has its own set of grading tools, which I'm sure many of you have seen with the similarity reports and all that fun stuff Turnitin offers. The next thing uh, is Zoom and Media Site. So both are already integrated into your Canvas courses. Um, first thing to point out, it will be that Media Site, if you plan to use it, uh, needs to be added to your course navigation first. Uh, so the way you would do that is by going to your course, you click on the settings link from the bottom. So this link will take you to all your course settings. Um, and then you have to click on the navigation tab at the top. So this navigation tab represents everything that's showing on your left navigation menu. So this is also where you can hide certain things by clicking on the three dots next to like, say if I wanted to hide pages, I would click the three dots next to pages and then click disable. That will then move pages down to this menu, which is everything students can't see. So for media site, you wanna to go to this bottom area click the three dots and click enable, and that will move it up. That's, that's just a key thing to point out about media site. Uh, for Zoom, Zoom's already located on your left navigation menu. Um, a cool thing about Zoom is you can schedule meetings directly through that link. So by clicking on Zoom, you'll launch yourself into the Zoom portal. It looks similar to the uh, web browser portal. You can schedule meetings and any of your cloud recordings that you've captured will also show up here. So if you want to publish certain recordings for your students, um, the students can click on that Zoom link. And if they're published, they will all live in that Zoom area. So all they would do is click the Zoom, they would click cloud recordings and see any of the recordings you've published for that course. So kind of a handy tool here. The next thing and kind of the newest thing to come to Canvas is the SF State Syllabus tool. So the SF State Syllabus tool is our AT built tool and it's located in the left navigation menu. That will launch you to syllabus.sfsu.edu, a new browser window uh, where you can find any existing syllabi that you've created in iLearn and you can attach it to um, your Canvas courses. Also, uh, we recommend using the SF State Syllabus tool just because we kind of find it a lot more uh, useful since it has all the SF State policies on it. You can really customize it to the way you want. Um, it's pretty user friendly in my experience. Um, also, Canvas has a built-in syllabus tool. That's why you see two syllabus links. So. Um, you can choose to use the Canvas syllabus tool if you like it, um, but keep in mind that any Turnitin assignments that you've created for your course won't show up, automatically show up on that syllabus tool. So that's also a reason we recommend using the SF State one. So this next area is third-party tools. So with Canvas comes some special integrations. For each of your courses, you can add specific apps like Box. You can integrate Box with your uh, Canvas course. You can integrate OneDrive. Um, and that's all done through, um, if you go to your course settings and go to apps, you can find the available apps you can configure into your Canvas courses. Uh, one thing we wanted to note is that if you're working with some third party that's saying that you can just do this, this, and this to get this app working inside Canvas, that's not true because uh, they need that third party needs to work with us at AT directly in order to get whatever tool they're trying to work to work. We have to pretty much like flip a switch in order for um, any type of tool to operate successfully through Canvas. So the last area is extras. Uh, one of the biggest ticket items is importing content from iLearn to Canvas. If you wanted to do it manually, uh, the main guide for this will be in our AT Help Center. You'll want to go to um, 
this video and that breaks it down step by step on how to use to create a backup file and import that backup file into Canvas. Um, right now, you would you should if you have access to Canvas, you should also see any K16 courses. So we had this vendor uh, called K16 that if you taught any class in the last academic year, so 2021-2022, K16 uh, automatically migrated all of that course content into Canvas for you. And you should find those courses under your unpublished courses section in your Canvas dashboard. Uh, you can identify that they're a K16 course because they will have K16 in the name. And then you can technically, once your spring course comes around, or if you're doing fall, uh, you can then take that course and import it into that spring course. So K16 can ha pretty much eliminated the step of creating a backup file and importing it into Canvas. Now you can just copy a Canvas course into a different Canvas course. So be aware that if you're seeing a bunch of courses in your unpublished course section, uh, that is because we wanted to kind of make things a little bit easier for you all. So there are some a few things to expect when you do import from iLearn, whether it be from a K-16 course or from an iLearn backup. Uh, first off, section summaries will convert to a page. Activity descriptions, like I said, will not be uh, displaying directly on modules. They'll be found inside the activity itself. P pictures convert to files, but pictures that were on the front page convert to a page. Quizzes are unpublished. Original due dates remain. Uh, labels convert themselves to a page or a text header. Uh, at this time, iLearn video does not carry over. You have to export your iLearn video and re-upload it, but we are currently working on a tool, um, an iLearn video integration to help you with that process, but currently there is no ETA on when that's going to be done. Uh, glossaries don't exist or don't have a equivalent in Canvas, so glossaries will essentially convert itself into a page, but any glossary entries that were in inside iLearn will no longer carry over. So be aware of that. And then any Zoom links that were created through iLearn will not carry over. So as again, a reminder, uh, please set aside time to work with your Canvas courses because they do not look the same at all. From past faculty I've worked with, they say it's just it's kind of hard navigating um, the Canvas course because they look so different. So the next extra is the Canvas teacher app. So if you like working on the go, you can choose to download the Canvas teacher app and you're able to access all your courses through that app. You can grade assignments through that app and you can send messages out. Um, so if you're interested in mobile technology, that is available for you all. And this brings us to the end of the workshop. So I just want to point out for any assistance with Canvas uh, at all, it, including the iLearn migration stuff, the quickest way to get help or contact us will be through that number, the 415-405. 5555 five, five, five number. If you're on campus, just smash the five and you'll uh, be able to contact one of our agents.